Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Donna from AxTheRadTech.com and I help you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about extra production and of course, I'm going to try to make the explanations as simple and as understandable as possible so that whenever you are asked to explain how x-rays are produced, you're able to do so easily. Let's get into today's topic. I'm in need of an x-ray. into the actual part of how x-rays are produced we need to consider the electromagnetic spectrum and electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation is actually a form of energy that is produced when we have electrically charged particles moving about in a vacuum or in matter it can also come about by an oscillation or a movement right like a circling of particles both magnetic and electric causing a disturbance. So we're just gonna take a quick look at where x-rays fall in the electromagnetic spectrum because within electromagnetic radiation we have a lot of varying amounts of energy strengths. In this image that you see here this is actually the electromagnetic spectrum and we see where x-rays fall in that spectrum. Just after UV rays but before gamma rays. And as you go up in the spectrum in terms of strength, you increase the frequency and you decrease its wavelength. But enough of that, let's get into the general synopsis of what X-ray production is or what occurs. Now, if you want to give a general synopsis on how X-rays are produced without going into a set of detail, but you still want to just give a quick two minutes or even a one minute answer, you can easily say that X-rays are produced due to the sudden deceleration of very fast moving electrons as they hit the target anode. And in this process, 99% of what is created is actually heat, whereas 1% or sometimes less than 1% is the actual x-ray. X-rays and gamma rays are usually compared to each other and you see a lot of similarities because they are high up and next to each other on the electromagnetic spectrum. However, there are two big differences with x-rays versus gamma rays. X-rays are produced when high fast or high velocity electrons come to a stop suddenly, whereas gamma rays are produced when radioactive materials decay. Now let's take a look at the major components of the x-ray tube. We'll be getting into some more details on them, but just to list them out, we have, of course, the glass envelope that the tube is housed in. We have the vacuum. We also have the copper stem, the anode, the tube window, the cathode, the electronic focusing cup, the filaments and its electron cloud, the focal spot on a tungsten target. And when the x-ray is produced, it escapes through the tube window and we get the useful x-ray beam. So let's get into the structures of the tube, just a few of them a bit more, as they will form the basis of our explanation on how x-rays are produced. Structures of the tube are contained within the envelope. This envelope provides vacuum, support, and electrical insulation. The envelope is usually made from glass, although some tubes contain envelopes that were made from ceramic or sometimes metal. This is a picture of what the tube generally looks like and it's actually pretty small because think about an x-ray room and the size of the tube, you know? So it's a small component within the tube. Not pictured in our diagram, there's also the insulating oil. And we just mentioned that the tube provides electrical insulation. Well, this insulating oil carries heat that is produced by the anode away via conduction. Now that we've looked at all the parts of the extra tube, the main parts that causes the x-rays to be produced, we need to look at two of the major, major primary elements that helps with x-ray production. That being the filament or the cathode side and the target or the anode side. So let's get into just some characteristics about these two components. The filament on the cathode side is a very, very thin piece of tungsten wire. And we use tungsten because it has a high atomic number 
It is really good at emitting electrons through thermionic emission and we'll discuss that further. It has a really high melting point so we know that when we have those 99% of heat being generated through extra production it can withstand that heat and it wouldn't just melt away and well it could be made into thin wires so it doesn't take up a lot of space and you know we get to keep the tube smaller you know. The size of the filament is relevant or related to the size of the focus but that we have and in a lot of cases some cathodes have two sizes of focus what's broad and fine focus. The filament of course is housed within the focusing cup as we could see by the diagram. And of course the target is at the anode or the positive side of the tube and it's where we have the electrons striking so that they could come to that sudden stop to create extra photons. The target is made of tungsten for the same reason that the filament is. To further help the target area and the anode and stuff, we have rhenium being added to the target so that we can prevent cracking and high temperatures or melting of the target anode. The anode is positively charged while the cathode is negatively charged because you know we have electrons coming from the cathode which again we will talk about very very soon. The anode target usually is at an angle of between 5 to 15 degrees. In order for x-rays to be produced, which is what we'll be getting into just now, the steps of x-ray production, we need to know where we even get any energy to create these x-rays and they come from the generator. The generator is connected to the x-ray tube through an electrical circuit and it also needs to provide, well, be able to change, I should say, or to convert the AC or the alternating current into direct current because we don't want the types of current trying to be flowing back and forth throughout the tube in all kinds of directions, you know? We need to have a negatively charged electrons going to the positively charged anode and not vice versa or mixed up and all of that. So that's why the generator is very important. So now let's get into the actual steps of X-ray production. The first thing that happens is that the current from the generator is applied to the cathode area and it passes through the tungsten filament and it will heat up. Step two, as it is heated up, thermionic emission will happen. And thermionic emission is a nice fancy term but it really refers to electrons being emitted from a surface, in this case a filament, when heat energy is applied. So thermionic actually is broken up into thermal and ion. So heat is applied to the metal. Step 3, due to attraction, because we must have the negatively charged electrons that are produced to go somewhere. I mean, they can't just sit there, right? So they are attracted across the tube because they need to find a positive terminal. This terminal would be the anode. The electrons will hit the tungsten targets of the anode with a very, very high energy. It's moving very fast, so there's high velocity. It hits the tungsten target and obviously it will dramatically stop. And this energy that it is hit with is determined by the tube's selected potential voltage. After this happens, photoelectric effects will take place. Photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons when electromagnetic radiation, such as a light, hits a material. In this case, the electrons hit the tungsten target of the anode. And thus, Electrons emitted in this manner are called photoelectrons. In step 4, as the electrons all rush to hit that target, they will have two very important interactions, Bremsstrahlung and characteristic interaction, which we could always talk about more in another video. But these two interactions will result in the conversion of energy to heat being 99% heat and x-ray photons, the 1%. Next, the x-ray photons are then released in a beam with a range of varying energies called the x-ray spectrum. And lastly, the x-ray photons will then exit out of the window of the tube and interact with the patient. Then it will pass through the patient and interact with the image receptor and help us form our image. That's it for this explanation on how X-rays are produced and what leads up to X-ray production.
I hope that this was helpful and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Thank you.